Hi, my name is Chris, and I'd like to talk to you about test-driven development. In this case, I'm using the product IntelliJ IDEA, and this is essentially the same as PyCharm, and I'm going to be doing Python development because it's a little bit quicker than Java development. The first thing I'd like you to note is that I have a green bar. When I run my unit test, the green bar means that everything is passed. If there's an error that I introduce into this, such as that, you'll see the error shows up in the the IDE's editor window, and it also causes that test to fail. So, correcting the error, again, things will automatically pass as soon as it notices. This is a feature that's in IntelliJ and PyCharm, where you can select the option to toggle auto-tests. Toggle auto-tests back on, and there we are, we're good to go. I'm going to illustrate test-driven development. I want to add a new feature to this project where I can paginate post synopses. This is a blog project that I'm doing myself. It's an open source project. And I want to add this little feature. Just like any other good IDE, this one gives me help. And so for my test here, I'm going to need to do a little bit of pre-work. I know what my signature is basically going to look like. I need to know a start number or ID for the posts. I need to have a page length. And I also want to have a post type. Some posts are in draft. Some posts are published. Some posts may have been deleted. So let's go select a post type. And this will get the first post type out of that list and my test is still passing. Next, I want to load the synopses. For my unit tests, number negative 105 is a special ID. I wrote negative IDs, and at this point, we can see the query object has no attribute load paginated post synopses. That means that we don't have that method defined. This is true test-driven development in that for me to have this test pass, I'm going to need to implement it. I know a few other characteristics about this particular query that I'm interested in. I know that I'm going to have to make sure that I have some content get returned. It can't be null or none. And I know that there's going to be a specific length and an ID that I'm expecting to see. At this point, I can say I'm expecting to have exactly one returned, and that would make sense given our page length of one. And I know that it's going to be the ID negative 103 because I wrote the test data. All right, so now our goal is to get our test case to pass. I know what my method name has to be. And I know what my starting ID is, my post type, and my page length. Now that I've written my comments so I know what I'm doing, let's do the actual implementation for synopses. The query language that I'm using is called SQL Alchemy. It's similar to Hibernate, except this is for Python instead of for Java. It provides object relationship mapping.
Now that I've provided an implementation, let's see if this passes. So we have an error. It says that it's not returning everything that was expected. What can we do to fix this? The first problem might be that it's looking for a particular ID. We correct that error. All right. If we look more carefully at this, we're going to see that we're missing a couple things. One, we have the wrong ID type here. So we know that our implementation is incorrect. All right, that's a lot farther. Now we're actually returning things. And we're seeing that the ID that we're getting is incorrect. So we're missing the post type. So what we can do is we can add the post type to our query. Still have a problem. Filter doesn't exist. Fix that typo. Ah, here's the problem. So we have a post type ID on the post synopsis. So I'll look at the post synopsis, post type ID, and have that match the post ID. There we go. Now we're getting what we expected. So we've seen how test-driven development can help us correct errors that we've made while we're doing our implementation. The next thing that we're interested in doing is testing for a defect. So I'm going to copy this test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the scenario where we are loading the post synopses for the first time, where we don't necessarily know what ID we're starting with. Now, one of the things that I know about this database is I don't have any additional records, that I don't have any posts that are positive numbers. And we know from my query that it's going to look for things that are greater than. Here, we have an operator error that's showing up with none. Given these two facts, one, I know that I'm not going to have any posts. I can change that to length of synopsis should be equal to zero. And I can change this other test. We're not going to have an ID, so I'm not going to worry about trying to check one for something that doesn't exist. So my test is still failing. Now we can go into this implementation and fix this error. And now my test case passes. What happens when you're using test-first development is it gives you the confidence that you can refactor, that you can change your code to correct errors and resolve problems without expecting your current code to break. You can do a lot of things like this in Eclipse. It'll support this sort of thing, but first and foremost, we have to have a test-first methodology the discipline that we're going to use to write our unit tests first. And then and only then will we be able to have this confidence in fixing things and knowing that our logic is correct. And the product I'm using here is my personally licensed IntelliJ IDEA, which supports Java and Python development. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day.